Here, I have a problem on uh, evaluating limits and uh, L'Hopital's rule. Okay, let's go over the question. The current at time uh, T in a coil with resistance R, inductance L, and subjected to a constant electromotive force E is given by I equals to E over R times 1 negative E to the power negative R times T over L. Obtain a suitable formula to be used when R is very small. So here, we have a formula for current I. It's over here. And uh, the question is asked us to obtain a suitable formula to be used when R is very small. So here uh, we don't have uh, any specific value for R, but the question says R is very small. If R is very small, then R has to be very close to zero. So that can be done by taking limit R tends to zero. So limit R tends to zero means R is getting closer and closer to zero. That is R is very small. So this limit meets the condition given in the question that is R is very small. So when I take R, uh, when I take limit R tends to zero, R is very small. So that is, uh, that means the condition uh, given in the question, R is very small. Okay, so we can take limit R tends to zero on both sides of the formula given over here. So we get limit R tends to zero I. On the right side, I'm getting limit R tends to zero E times uh, one negative E to the power negative RT over L over R. Okay, so directly we can substitute the limit for R, that is we have to plug in zero for R over here you know, into this stuff. Then I'll be getting E times one negative E to the power. So when I plug in zero for R over here, so zero times T is zero, zero divided by L is zero. So uh, at the exponent of E, everything will become zero. So it's going to be E to the power zero over. So here in denominator we have R, so I have to plug in the limit uh, zero for R. So I get e times one negative, anything to the power zero is one. So here e to the power zero is just one over zero. So one negative one is zero, zero times e is zero, zero over zero. So this is called indeterminate form. Okay, in evaluating limits, uh, if I get indeterminate from zero over zero, it's not a final answer. We can evaluate the limit using L'Hopital's rule. Okay, let me do it over here. To use L'Hopital's rule, what we need to do is uh, we have to consider the step which, uh, which comes right before where we have applied the limit. Actually, this is a step where we have applied the limit. So to use L'Hopital's rule, uh, we have to consider the previous step over here. So in this step, uh, if I use L'Hopital's rule, I have to keep uh, this stuff on the left side as it is. And uh, in the stuff on the right side, I have to apply L'Hopital's rule that is how to find the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately with respect to the variable r. So here I'm saying uh, that we have to do derivative with respect to the variable r. That is, I consider r as a variable. So because uh, we have limit zero for r, so we have to consider r as a variable and uh, this is a function of the variable r. So what about the remaining letters e, t, l? All the remaining letters have to be considered as constant. Usually, uh, when we find derivative of a function which contains variable in both numerator and denominator, we will be using cohesion rule. But when we use L'Hopital's rule, we are not supposed to use cohesion rule. We have to find the derivative of numerator and denominator separately with respect to the variable for which we have the limit. So here I'm going to find the derivative of uh, this numerator with respect to R. So here, uh, inside the parenthesis, we have the variable r. So this complete parenthesis has to be considered as variable part. And this variable part is multiplied by the constant e. When I, when I want to find derivative uh, of uh, two quantities uh, multiplied, where one is variable and other one is constant, I have to keep the constant as it is and find the derivative of variable part. So now I keep the constant e as it is. Now I'm going to find the derivative of this variable part so here, when I find derivative of this one, this one is a constant, it will become zero, negative. Now I have to find the derivative of this e to the power negative rt over l. So this derivative is the same, e to the power negative rt over l. Okay, so I've done derivative only for this uh, part e to the power negative rt over l. By chain rule, I have to do further derivative of this exponent negative r times t over l with respect to the variable r. Okay, what do I get if I find the derivative of this exponent negative RT over L with respect to R? So here T is a constant, L is a constant. So the division of T uh, and L is also a constant. That is T over L is a constant. So this constant is multiplied by the variable R. 
So here the variable r is multiplied by a constant. When I find derivative of this one, I have to keep this constant as it is. I have to find the derivative of this variable r with respect to r. So the derivative of this variable r with respect to r is just one times t over l. The simplification of this one is a negative t over l. So when I do uh, by chain rule, when I do further derivative of this exponent negative r t over l, uh, it results in negative t over l. It has to be multiplied over here. Okay, let me do that. So by chain rule, the derivative of this one is negative t over l over. So the derivative of the denominator r with respect to r is just one. Okay, let me write uh, the next step. Let limit r tends to zero. Uh, let's do the simplification over here. E times. So we can ignore this zero, and here negative times negative will become positive t over l times e to the power negative r t over l. And uh, the denominator one can be ignored because uh, we know the denominator is one. We don't have to consider that. Okay, uh, we have uh, completed the simplification. So now we can uh, plug in the limit zero for r. Then I will be getting uh, e times t over l e to the power. When I plug in zero for r over here, so zero times t is zero. Zero divided by l is zero. So everything uh, becomes zero. We get e to the power zero. So e to the power zero is what one because anything to the power zero is one. One times t over l is t over l. T over l times e is e. So finally we get e t over l. On the left side we have uh, limit r tends to zero i. So this is a suitable formula uh, to be used when r is very small.